and he'll be delivering his talk. So without any much delay, I, I request uh, Dr. Chikara to deliver on, uh, on the given topic. Thank you very much, Dr. Chikara. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Prabhati. I'll just, uh, you know, just pull down my slides, just give me a second. Can you see my screen? So uh, today I'm going to have a discussion. Thank you for uh, you know quick introduction. Uh, let me uh, give you the today's topic that today we're going to discuss about gut microbiome in chronic disease and the role of the probiotics. So before we start understanding what is pro, uh, microbiome, we want to understand who we are. So if you look at that, who we are, there are two parts of a human system. One is the genetics, basically, who's controlled by all cells and organs, basically, the, the cells and the organ and the systems which we are seeing into that, that is called the visible system. Uh, this is controlled by the human host or human DNA. And we have another option basically is called invisible microbiome, uh, which is residing in different part of the human body system. And, uh, you know, both combined together, these invisible microbiome basically lives in a uh, symbiosis with the human organ system and both combining, uh, making the complete human system. Now in this human system, to function a body in a normal way, uh, we need to basically have, a, this is called as the gut health or the overall microbiome health, as well as the organ system health. Together, we'll have a holistic health. Now, what is microbiome? Uh, microbiome is a vast number of organism microbes basically reside in a uh, different part of the human system, which include bacteria, fungi, viruses, phages, so there are several group of, uh, you know, microbes which comes into uh, uh, the common and there are hundreds of trillions of, you know, microbes in human intestine. More than 150 X of this gene, uh, uh, more than 3.3 million non redundant gene are represented by these group of microbes. Uh, 300 to 1200 species depending on the person's age and person's gender and kind of the you know uh, uh, daily life he's having. So these species resides into the gut and they have a control in almost all function of the human body. Uh, majority of that you know some of the initiation of that diseases also including diseases. You can see the disease basically is, in, uh, is initiated by certain of the genetic factor and certain disease initiated by microbiome which we are going to discuss in a few slides. As we, as each person has a unique DNA, microbiome also unique for each person. And uh, uh, this is, you know, have uh, almost 20 to uh, 10 to 20 percent of diversity uh, person to person. Like in the genetic variation, we have uh, only 1 percent diversity in microbe. We have a, a huge number of diversity, which is 20 percent almost. Importance of the gut microbiome has been ignored till recently and the context to management of the chronic disease. We're going to discuss that what you know role of these microbiome play in a, a chronic diseases. Now, if you look at that, how these microbiome from various stages of the life is basically working and targeting, you can you can see that uh, you know this microbiome at a birth we have a very few species, hundreds of species. Basically, as we start growing into that, we start acquiring these species, uh, which is you know six to one year we have uh, you know seven hundred uh, almost seven hundred species. When we go into the adult phase, then we have somewhere between you know thousand to twelve hundred species. This also again depending on the person's you know diet habit. Uh, uh, and uh, lifestyle basically. Uh, adult and as we disease or we have, uh, you know, as we old age or we have a disease, this age related diversities decrease happens into that uh, in, a, in a human gut. Uh, especially normal physiology, uh, the symbiosis and energy regulations play a very important role uh, in a leading into the healthy life. Uh, you, can, you can see that, uh, you know, this scenario where uh, if you have a, a good diet, uh, you are taking low, uh, low on the medications and you are doing regular physical exercise and maintaining your good uh, health. That means and sleep uh, uh, in that, including some part of the yoga, then your gut microbiome will be healthy uh, in that. And there will be always balance between unhealthy and healthy microbes, uh, which we are going to have a discussion in fifth slide. So unhealthy microbiome leads to the altered into the dysbiosis and ultimately leads to the disease. 
So in the in the dysbiosis, what happened is there's the first stage uh, before the disease happen. There is a disbalance uh, of the you know healthy organism, or we call the good organ, good microbiome versus bad microbiome, or healthy microbiome versus unhealthy microbiome. Basically, there is a balance which is disturbed, and this disturbed balance basically leads to the uh, the first stage is basically dysbiosis, and then it converted into the disease progressions. Now, if we look at uh, uh, that uh, the function, how these you know microbiome play an uh, important uh, role in the gut. So uh, it has a very very important functions in in several area. Uh, gut microbiome influence uh, uh, you know uh, health human health including you know appetite energy metabolism immunity and various uh, functions it involved into that you can see uh, this very beautifully depicted into this picture the left hand side what is happening here into that how the disease happens if we are you know into the certain stage into that we are altering the you know ph excess protein consumption uh, sugar like uh, uh, you know uh, fructose uh, more intake of the saturated fatty acids and uh, you know antibiotics and other drugs which we are taking so when we are having a low on a, on uh, on that uh, uh, diet which is whole diet and high using the processed food kind of stuff then we have uh, all these you know uh, process uh, which has been done which is like scfa production decreases tamo production increases lps which is major source for the inflammation lps uh, increases and so gut inflammation start increasing and in insulin resistance which is almost causing you know the disease progression in various the chronic lifestyle disorders if we are in a pro taking probiotics and proper fiber dietary intakes uh, in the system the whole process basically reverses into the more of the as uh, cfa production uh, antioxidant productions and then you have a different you know lipid metabolism low gut inflammations and insulin sensitivity which leading to the health so there is a fine balance between health and unhealthy uh, unhealthy status and then leading to the diseases in many of the cases the disease starting point as explained you is that your dna your gene which is you know either uh, you know the variation you acquired through your parent or through the you know during the process of your development process uh, these genes basically responsible for that mechanism you know gene expressions various uh, you know uh, biological functions Uh, including whether it is you know epigenetic function whether it's metabolic function whether it's structural functions so various ways you know, these genes are impacted but later on how the disease is going to progress and what are the severity of these disease is going to happen is all determined by the microbiome so host nutrition metabolism is one of the important factor this microbiome play a very important role structural integrity of the gut mucosal barrier immune modulations scfa short chain fatty acid productions basically uh, some of the vitamin like vitamin b12 amino acids lipid biosynthesis and protection against pathogen also very important factors uh, in that xenobiotic and drug metabolism also uh, a part an imbalance of unhealthy versus you know healthy microbes into the gut which contribute into the various of the lifestyle factors the first thing is you start gaining your weight or you have a blood sugars or you have a high cholesterol and these are the you know primary factor where you have a different other species like hormone imbalance also be a first primary factor so from your health to unhealthy these are the primary factors happens and then you have a secondary chronic diseases which is going into the system now as you seeing this picture that how this you human gut microbiota and health and disease and what are the relation between these uh, you know microbiota and the organ system uh we have been you know known that you know there is only gut brain access but there are lot many uh, you know systems access which has been contributed these microbiome communications to uh, your organ system or body organ system now if you see if you have a healthy microbiome as we, in a few slide we're going to have a, some discussion that you know uh, in in healthy microbiome you biosis is happen where all of your biochemical and other you know process are very smoothly uh, there and uh, you know each uh, depending on the composition of your microbiota and kind of the disturbance happening into your system which is leading to the dysbiosis of the gut then your communication to different organs basically has been impacted and the disease progression on those organs whether it is a gut brain access then you have a stress anxiety and depression whether you have a gut brain endocrine access then you have a regulatory or hormonal disorders you have a gut heart access where cardiovascular atherosclerosis and hypertension uh, like diseases like that you have a gut lung access gut liver access where you have a non alcoholic fatty liver uh, liver inflammations and pancreasis we have a gut pancreasis excess disturbance then you have basically diabetes pancreatic cell inflammations and insulin uh, sensitivity or resistivity then you have a gut bone access where is a demineralization and osteoporosis 
uh, gut, gut muscle excess then muscular impairment uh, and uh, sarcopenia. Uh, similarly, you have a reproductive gut, reproductive gut, kidney excess and bladder excess. You can see that almost, almost uh, most of the organ system in your body is indirectly influenced by the uh, you know uh, microbes and in turn these microbes what they do is basically they produce certain metabolites which are you know impacting and interacting with your organ system now this dysbiosis of the uh, gut microbiome as explained earlier there's very fine balance in this system so one is the whether you have a good good diversity in your gut basically if abundance and diversity are maintained uh, in a healthy organism versus unhealthy organism then this dysbiosis basically is being created so if you have a more unhealthy organism and this is basically dysbiosis in the gut as I explained the first process basically starting you know lps and various you know uh, system whether it is through the nerve system or uh, you know entic nervous system uh, or or through that uh, you know uh, different you know hp access so all these you know uh, uh, communication channels has been started through the metabolites uh, through the host metabolite versus the uh, microbiome metabolite and the, all these diseases whether heart disease inflammatory bowel disease liver disease chronic kidney disease uh, various brain disorders diabetes respiratory diseases and various cancer impact basically uh, on the dysbiosis now, there are several mechanisms uh, has been already been uh, in, in the research which has been you know, identified in various disease functions uh, like in diabetes, you have a different organism uh, like you have a Rosperia officialis, then you have a, a Fecalibacterium persungi and uh, Eubacterium bactail. And they have a different mechanism like increased pro-inflammatory cytokinin is increased. Uh, decrease anti-inflammatory cytokinin, uh, you know, TLR4 and MID88 pathway increase, NFKB and IL6 TNF alpha pathways. So there are various mechanisms already being restored. And these group of batteries, this is not only four, but they are group of battery of organism of healthy organism also decreases. And these organisms uh, basically altered into the gut. Similarly, there are other mechanisms also being well studied in, in few years. Now, uh, once we understood that how these microbes and they play an important role into the diet, now let's understand how they are shaped into our gut. So the diets are, you know, important factor, uh, you know, what we eat. So kind of the diversity into the diet we are taking basically, whether we are taking processed food or we are taking more of the non-vegetarian food or we are taking, you know, whole vegetarian and grain food basically. Based on that, we are shaping our gut microbiome into uh, in, in that and their uh, metabolite production is basically determining how is our health status is going to be? Are we going to be healthy and lean person uh, with you know less of the chronic disease burden, or are we going to have an obese person with more of the chronic disease burden? Now, what happened when we have this diet and how this you know gut microbiome? So, whatever we are taking the diet, it affects basically host gene expression, which ultimately impact. As I explained you know, earlier, that there are two impact, which is upward, uh, you know, uh, downward directions where and the upward directions basically. So, downward direction means the host towards the microbiome, and upward direction from microbiome to the host that is the brain communications, which is have a different organ system communication. Now, these dietary intake basically whatever there the host derived. Uh, you know, dietary metabolism and, uh, you know, uh, and then uh, you have basically, uh, you know, this diet shape your micro, uh, microbial community into your gut and the product of the host and microbial digestions basically is circulating into the, your system. And these metabolites have direct impact on the health and, uh, you know, disease status of a particular person. Uh, microbiome, uh, these, uh, uh, the initiation of the disease is, you know, cause of the genetic regions, as I explained you, maybe, you know, function of the gene or a particular mechanism of the pathway, which leading into the initiation of the disease. But how severity of the disease is going to be, how the medication is going to be progressed, and what are the duration of these disease, right? Are they are reversible? Some people, you can see the diabetes are reversible. Some people, it is not. Some, it is reversible and relapses. In such scenario, basically, the microbiome is the factor which determines that how the severity and duration of the disease in the person is going to happen. Now, as we understand that, you know, a kind of the diet, whether we are taking whole food diets and whole vegetable diet, which is rich in fiber and low in carb, basically, and balanced into the protein, or we are taking basically more into the processed food uh, diets, basically, we have a low fibers and a uh, lot of, you know, glucose, a lot of the sugar rich diets, basically, or ultra processed diet. Now, these two processes which are happening here, there are two ways 
uh, either we are creating eubiosis, that means balanced microbiome in our gut, or dysbiosis. Now, in this, if you have a eubiosis, then you are creating neuroplasticity, good amount of so food chain, uh, fatty acids in your system, basically, uh, good microbial diversity is there, uh, and uh, several molecules which are required for the leaky gut, basically, or inflammation, or low uh, inflammation, continuous inflammation, basically, decreases. Now, the dysbiosis, it is the reverse process which happens, and uh, this is the cause of the disease. Let's understand some function on how the influence of the gut microbiome on the diabetes uh, in, in few slides. There are significant decrease in the gut uh, microbiota diversity uh, on the diabetes patients when compared to healthy individual. These dysbiosis, you know, there are various, you know, function which has been done. Uh, this dysbiosis, one is impaired intestinal barrier functions, host metabolic pathway and leading to the insulin, uh, you know, decrease in insulin sensitivity and increase in insulin resistivity. Now there is a bacteria lactobacillus, you know, uh, fermentum or plantarium casei, rosvirea, acromensia or cactiroids, basically, they have shown all impact on the improving the glucose metabolism and insulin sensitivity, whereas they also, you know, surpass the uh, pro-inflammatory uh, uh, cytokine significantly in diabetic patient. But if this, uh, you know, bacteria uh, decreases in the gut and other bacteria like coprococcus and other bacteria basically increase, that means, uh, you know, insulin sensitivity decreases. And despite, is a, uh, you know, the flavonobacter, uh, which is directly re uh, related to the insulin resistance. You can clearly see from this diagram that, you know, how that, you know, group of a battery of bacteria, uh, you know, in the system basically uh, impact uh, the whole processes, which is like a energy metabolism and diversity into the gut. If it is, you know, uh, more of these, you know, bacteria increases like Enterococcus or Fibrobacter, or if this bacteria of Lactobacillus bifidobacterium is, uh, and acromensia is basically decreased. In that case, you have basically uh, gut uh, dysbiosis and and depending on their diversity and combination of these organisms, whether you have a low grade uh, microbial dysbiosis or high grade. In case of the high grade, then constant lipid, you know, LPS is being produced, metabolic endotoxin start uh, secretion, uh, inflammation and constant inflammations. And there is a whole lot of system basically, which is, you know, gut pancreas excess impacted and insulin resistance and the complication of T2 diabetes happens into that. Similar case has been observed uh, in case of when we are discussing about the gut microbiome on the type 1 diabetes. Majorly type 1 diabetes is generally caused by the, uh, you know, genetic factors. Uh, which, you know, uh, beta cell destructions happens, but, uh, you know, microbiome also play a very important role where, uh, you know, formicutes to bacteroid ratio decrease basically, and, uh, you know, bacteroids increases, diversity decreases, and various other, you know, metabolic impacts happens here, which is, you know, dysregulation, enhance the dysregulation of immune system, and also increase the permeability of the gut intestine, which is leading to, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, the bacterial uh, and byproducts uh, into the blood stream basically and also impute immune tolerance of the microbial antigen uh, which is you know liposap polysaccharides and other uh, you know antigens which leads into the uh, you know different uh, process of uh, apc to uh, cd8 plus t cell activations and uh, beta cell destruction so the starting point is the genetic but more progression happening to type 2 diabetes if we can balance this group still we will be able to type 1 diabetes patient but you know glucose level can be maintained and uh, done the another case we want to study about, you know, obesity, uh, as obesity is one of the major cause, uh, you know, in uh, especially to starting the chronic diseases. In in case of uh, there are two scenario here, one is a normal person and another is basically obese person. So in the obese person, how is the diversity of microbiome and what is the scenario of the gut epithelia and, uh, you know, situation of the inflammations and, uh, you know, leakage into through the gut intestinal barriers and mucus lining basically all has been impacted. And ultimately what happened is overall adiposity and this uh, dyslipidia situations happen. Uh, impaired glucose homeostatus and low grade inflammation is basically leading to uh, abnormal depositions of the uh, glucose conversing into the fat and depositing into the various organ system. So it is start from the internal organ, then goes to the external organ. And that is, you know, where we have a start problem with the, uh, you know, spatial problem into the organ system. 
there are many uh, neural mechanism which has been uh, you know done into the uh, you know pathway into the gut brain axis so these pathophysiology and pathogenesis of intestinal disorders like ibd ibs or any you know psychiatric and neurological diseases like anxiety depression asd ad mspd in many of these you know imbalance of the gut microbial community is basically play a very very important role now if you can see here in in the scenario that you know there are symbiotic organism versus so you can see there are two pathways one is upside down basically second is downside up now you can see there are symbiotic organism basically if you have a more of the pathogenic strain then this you know balancing is disturbed and hp axis is gone peripheral immune system start activating continuously because of the disruptions here now there is a microbiota composition which we call as an entotype what kind of the microbiota composition where you have that means if you have a protein type of microbiota composition or fiber type utilization or mix of that and then you are taking a diet which is not suitable to your microbiota that means you are producing excess amount of other molecules which are basically required uh, into the systems to explain now there is a dietary interventions whatever the diet you are taking play a very important role based on the entrotype and that microbiota derived products and exogenous probiotics whatever we are using either they are basically improving this functions and going into the endocrine pathway hpa axis and the brain communication here basically we just now you can see in the scenario when you have uh, you know uh, downward control basically your gut mobility gut permeability and you know secretion of ga peptides and other basically in basically decreases which leads to a healthy status and in case of the disease status basically it is upward communication which is easily convertible basically if i have dietary intervention or you can have a probiotic intervention or if i will be able to uh, use a diet which is based on my entrotype then i will be able to have a better manage you know this uh, dysbiotic scenario and leading to the eubiosis scenario and then controlling the whole pathway you can see that each and every organ is connected through a various either the vagal nervous system or enteric nervous system or uh, you know uh, uh, in in this system and they have communication directly and uh, through this communication they are directly connected to gut also and the organ system and based on these communications you will be able to you know understand that how uh, these diseases been working now based on this now we understand what you know microbiome is how we are how it is basically flores what kind of the role it plays into the chronic disease what are the mechanism in different uh, you know the gut brain axis and different communication to the organ system and as i'll explain one more point here that you know uh, each person as i say unique microbiome composition so they do not have a impact the similar into the whole organ system in earlier slide we have seen some people have a more effect on pancreas so they develop diabetes uh, some system has has on on that you know heart related excess so they have a cholesterol or atherosclerosis or any other problem so they related heart related disease some have a brain related uh, communications basically that means they have the uh, you know uh, anxiety depressions or other uh, you know brain related uh, diseases neuro, neuro diseases basically so each person cannot have a you know multiple they have a one or two or combination of impacted on that and initially and if they are not taking care of then multiple organs start coming in. to that like if the diabetes are there then liver will come into the picture and then kidney come into the picture so it is very important to understand and there is well known you know establishment of the group of bacteria of organism and the linkage into this system and this is where this technology being developed that how we can you know predict and impact that you know which organ is impacted today and how this for further you know impacting onto the other organs in in the future now if you see that what are the strategy to control these microbiota there are two major strategy one is the diet modulation we have seen in earlier slide that how the diets uh, you know play an important role what kind of the communication it does into that you know brain and the organ and this diet modulation and the prebiotic and probiotic so we are going to focus more today into the how the probiotics and the prebiotics is going to play important role in that so probiotics uh, and we are going to have a few things basically discuss into that probiotic postbiotic basically in in uh, in the few slides basically now if you see the probiotics is a you know a live organism which are intended to you know create a healthy environment into the gut and uh, you know they benefit to the human system uh, basically through various mechanism of uh, you know communications and also they reduce the inflammations into the system and provide essential factors which are required for human uh, body organs to function maybe include vitamins some of the minerals basically vitamins and uh, you know molecules and there are uh, you know uh, 
small molecules, which is you know almost uh, 17 uh, molecules important, which are required uh, produced by these microbes. They can be found in the yogurts, fermented food, dietary supplements. And you can see that there are different class of you know, species has been used as, as a part. One is called lactobacillus species. So there are uh, uh, 12 to 13 lactobacillus species. And there are uh, you know, uh, 7 to 8 uh, bifidiobacterium species. And known lactobacillus species also and known lactic acid bacteria like Saccharomyces boulardii, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, uh, Streptococcus, uh, like that. There are uh, various other uh, species also being used into the probiotic. So how this probiotic basically function? So we, we are going to discuss about probiotics, which we have just understood, then prebiotics basically, and also basically symbiotic. So, and then postbiotic. So these are the four terminology which we are going to have a discussion in that currently we are discussing the probiotics and now we're going to discuss prebiotic and symbiotic. So if you see the source of probiotic can be either, you know, in the form of the capsule with the isolated species, which we have discussed just now, and we can have a combination of the species and, you know, packed into the capsule along with the different factors to have a good, I'm going to show you one of the example uh, of the probiotics basically. Now, if you see in the probiotics, their major activities, angiogenetic activity, pathogenic, antipathogenic activity, and uh, you know, prebiotics generally play a very important role on those organisms, basically, which is leading to anti-obesity, anti-diabetic, anti-allergic activity, and uh, you know, anti-cancer activity. And then, uh, you know, uh, in in both of them, basically, that is the postbiotics, which is you know, metabolic products uh, from the uh, probiotic organism, which exert the same functions which are there as a live organism also play a very important role, uh, whether it is a source of vitamins like vitamin B, which is a source of microbiome uh, through the microbiome source, which is used by the human system, uh, lactose metabolism in the digestions, basically, and immunological response to the and the infections control, basically. And in case of the symbiotics, symbiotics is basically where probiotics and prebiotics in a, in a common way, basically, and they play an important role in the cholesterol, you know, uh, blood pressures and uh, probiotics uh, communications into the uh, system, basically. So these are the ways, uh, you know, various mechanisms which are involved uh, in, a, in a functionality of, of the system. Now, this prebiotics, as we discussed about now, is a prebiotic. Prebiotics is the concept which are introduced uh, first time in 1995 by the Glenn and uh, Marcel. Uh, these uh, prebiotics are described as a non-digestible food ingredient. There is a source is basically the food ingredient, a part of the food component, which is non-digestible. It will be basically used by these microbiome to ferment and grow them, basically grow on, on them and utilize that as a system, basically, which is not uh, suitable for the human system to digest. And ultimately, they basically survive on that. And then there is a limit of activity. These are typically high rich fiber foods, basically, which help in human microflora to grow. What kind of the foods we are taking, basically, if it is, you know, uh, too much non-digestible food or, uh, you know, less of digestible, uh, you know, fiber food, basically, uh, it is basically determining your, uh, you know, uh, progress of the uh, gut health. Now, in that case, you have, uh, say, like, for example, fracto-oligosaccharide, FOS, uh, many, uh, uh, you know, fruits, like uh, many of the vegetables and, uh, you know, uh, cereals have this, like uh, onion, basically wheat or uh, like inulin. There are almost 13, uh, 13 to 14, uh, these different prebiotics can be uh, uh, done by the different source, basically, which has been used as a part. And that's how this is also play a very important when we are planning the diets, basically, that kind of the gut bacteria, which is, you know, destroyed and how we basically use this, uh, you know, information uh, to, to, you know, link the growth of the bacteria. As we discussed, the postbiotic is a bacterial product, which is not a viable organism, and they play a very important role, uh, you know, uh, as, a, as a growth of these or healthy uh, microbes in a human gut. Generally, the postbiotic include the, uh, you know, bacterial uh, metabolic products such as, you know, bacteriocin, organic acid, thinol, diacetyl uh, acetyl dehyde, and, uh, you know, different molecules, basically. And there are different, different, uh, you know, uh, natural sources of the strain, which produce a different molecules, has been used as the postbiotic and in the combination.
Symbiotics, the development of microbial research, as a you know, has been done. The symbiotics is nothing but, as I explained you, is the probiotic and the prebiotic fusions together and play a very important role when we are trying to you know, put these products together uh, in, in a life. They are synergistically together, exert a good effect basically on uh, you know, probiotic organism or uh, basically healthy organism into the human gut. And they also help. And these are the process where, you know, when we say, uh, you know, through the diet, we inoculate or, you know, we, uh, you know, regenerate these organisms certain and the uh, diversity basically into the gut. These are the point where it is, you know, important uh, points which has been used. Now, take an example of, uh, you know, probiotics. This is called probiotic and prebiotic plus. In this, you know, uh, in, in this, as I explained you that, you know, probiotic we can take as a capsule, we can take as a yogurt or a different, different source, which are available. I'm going to declare, uh, uh, you know, explain all the sources. Today, I'm just having few of them uh, in, in this presentation. Now, this probiotic contains 30 billion of good bacteria, enriched with 17 different bacteria, 10 species of lactobacillus, 5 species of bifidobacterium, 1 saccharomyces, 1 streptococcus, powered by the zinc and vitamin C is very, very important for the gut health and also fracto oligosaccharide lecithal and canberry extract you can see that all these you know component and you know the composition of these organism has been planned in such a way so that their networking and requirement into the human body system as part of the gut will be able to you know exert that effect of uh, synchronizations basically so this is how you will be able to and this play a very important role in improve your gut health reducing gas and acidity bloating constipation digestion and you you know, anxiety and depression also play a very, very important role, basically, in many, uh, you know, of the cases uh, we have seen that, you know, impact of these, uh, you know, probiotics, especially a combination of uh, these many species which we are working on. Another uh, product we were to discuss is basically kimchi. Kimchi is a traditional Korean food manufactured by fermenting vegetable. It is basically like our nappa cabbage, which has been you know, fermented with uh, pro, uh, probiotic lactic acid bacteria lab. And these bacteria ferment kimchi, uh, become dominant into this whole process of the fermentation process. And uh, you can see that uh, the importance of the kimchi in, in most of the cases, basically, you can see that uh, people are, uh, many of the people are using using who aware of or many of the nutritionists are basically recommending uh, you know kimchi and any other you know probiotics or other products but majority of the cases you can see that people are not aware and beside the probiotic you can see that uh, you know kimchi also has a very good source of vitamin b2 vitamin b3 b6 b9 uh, you know uh, iron also is very good 21 percent of your daily value is you know covered by you know a small uh, amount of kimchi you can use it basically uh, in in that lunch or dinner basically so this is is where you'll be able to get a benefit uh, on that. The next product is basically kombucha. It is known to be a you know very old product has been used specifically uh, you know uh, created from uh, fermented black tea or green tea leaves which is cabinda sinensis with the sugar uh, used and scoby is the bacteria and yeast combinations of this you know fermenter has been used into that and. <clears throat> The kombucha con composed of large number of organic acid, you know, fermented product, vitamins, amino acids, bioenergic amines, purines, a lot of pigmentation and hydrolytic enzymes, basically ethanol uh, in that. It helps uh, into the digestions, remove the body toxin, boost your energy, immune system, help into the lose weight and also help into controlling, you know, blood pressures uh, in that. So, but there are importance uh, in, in that it is how, which company it is make, what kind of the consistency. There are a lot of technology has been used nowadays to maintain the consistency of these kind of the products, basically, which we're going to discuss in, in the next slides. The another product is caffeine. So this is basically based on kombucha, purely based on the black tea or the green tea uh, product, basically fermented product. Uh, caffeine is a basically fermented cow milk, goat or sheep milk or a non it is basically, uh, you know, coconut milk has been used into that. It helped to boost, you know, digestive health, lower the cholesterol, blood sugar, and have an important vitamins and the minerals has been, uh, you know, used in, in that. But the problem is the people who has a lactose intolerance, they cannot use, uh, especially uh, these kind of the fermented uh, milk on that. Now, as I explain you, there are, you know, a lot of, a uh, lot of, there are a lot of technology which are uh, you know available uh, especially uh, when we are talking about 
identification of consistency uh, of these you know batch produced uh, either kaffir or kombucha uh, here basically you can see that uh, you know microbial composition of kaffir has been used using 16s and its sequencing technology uh, from the various uh, you know sources and you can see that uh, uh, you know in in uk ireland and the france there are six microbiomes consistently been identified in belgium it's eight microbiome in malaysia uh, uh, this uh, kaffir basically two microbes in italy seven microbes like that you know different uh, you know countries having a different compositions and different way uh, of making you know these products which are available uh, into the market as a of self uses now if you understand how these you know kaffir and kombucha works basically uh, this uh, you know uh, their base basically in kaffir we use basically dairy product you can make at home also there is in a kaffir seeds comes into that and then you can use for twice and thrice and then you can keep reusing on that right so uh, it is basically you know uh, the base here is either the milk or the coconut milk source basically uh, green if you are lactose intolerant you can use the you know coconut or oat milk source basically and here is basically green tea in kombucha it is basically green tea or black tea uh, a lot of nutritions value which are there here in in both the factors but here more of vitamin zinc and iron which are available in kombucha uh, both has a probiotics have a anti inflammatory anti microbial anti uh, oxidant effects into that uh, here you have a cholesterol impacts on that lowering your cholesterol stimulate your immune system basically here you have a liver weight uh, you know uh, weight loss and uh, blood sugar control basically but only problems basically downside that is high in sugar and if you have a problem with lactose then it is an issue you cannot take it a uh, caffeine if you have a caffeine intolerance then you know this may be a little problem to you uh, especially kombucha and uh, you know a uh, small amount of alcohol which is there in that uh, when it is getting fermented so uh, because the sugar fermented uh, in, in that case so that is what need to be you know taking into that now when we see that what are the benefit of probiotic into our gut so in this presentation we understood that the first thing we understood how is uh, uh, you know uh, how is the microbiome who we are how is are made up of how the development of microbiome happens what is the eubiosis and dysbiosis and how the dysbiosis leading to the disease what is the mechanism of the disease progression in a different cases like whether it is a type 2 diabetes type 1 diabetes or uh, in case of uh, the obesity and also how the communication channel from the gut microbiome to the upper that is brain access and organ system access and from brain to basically uh, to the gut uh, system so all the way downward communication and upward communication we have studied And now we want to understand that uh, you know we understood about free probiotics that uh, you know and uh, you know whether it is you know uh, manufactured by as a supplement probiotic or you are taking a different source whether yogurt or kaffir or kombucha or kimchi basically optimize uh, so what is the role of these probiotic and benefits uh, to the human uh, gut system it is optimize your gut function by balancing your gut bacteria Uh, reducing the symptom of the digestive disorders if you have ibs leaky gut diarrhea it basically helps into relieving those symptoms of course in case of ibs ibd we need a basically along with the medications also but if you are taking uh, these products uh, probiotic products will you help you to uh, faster recovery maintain and improve your gut uh, integrity it also reduce your gas and bloating and as i explain you because of the gut brain communications and various organ system communication uh, especially but uh, gut brain communications it has you know improve your endocrine system communication it improve your mood and uh, reduces stress that means anxiety and and the depression uh, help in the certain mental health conditions like anxiety depressions boost your immune system and speedy recovery from the illness it also have a uh, you know uh, important into uh, reducing uh, severity of certain allergy and eczema uh, skin problem and you have you improve your gut microbiome and this is you know many cases we have seen that you know diet has played a very important role microbiome based diet has played very important role and providing the microbiome along with the, together uh, you know uh, probiotic uh, microbiome is you know help people who are facing severe uh, problem with the eczema and, and the skin uh, you know uh, allergies with Basically. improve the nutrition absorption help into the weight loss uh, we have seen many people who are trying to lose the weight uh, you know uh, but you know either they uh, you know have a very difficulty in losing the weight after a certain point of time or if they are losing and uh, you know uh, the relapsing is happening and they are regaining the weight basically uh, yes genetic factors are very important uh, but yes microbiome play a very important role in uh, you know weight loss management if you are using microbiome based diet Uh, gut organ system access as explained you brain heart liver lung pancreas kidney you ovary your uh, you know urinary tract uh, you know systems basically it is
is all communicated uh, through microbiome uh, basically and whatever you know uh, disease uh, you know in one or two system is get impacted if you have a dysbiosis each person does not have all of the system impacted each person based on their genetic impact and you know microbiome impact one or two organ system are impacted either they have diabetes in combination with uh, you know liver problem or they have uh, you know uh, the cholesterol and in, in in that problem of you know heart disease in other their conditions basically so this is how the you know microbiomes in play uh, important role uh, in the system uh, thank you so much uh, for patiently listening i'll be happy to have uh, you know questions thank you very much uh, professor chikara sorry it was really a great talk uh, from uh, audiences if there is any question uh, professor chikara would, uh, would be happy to answer that is there any question yeah uh, dr mosmi could could not not join oh. earlier she just joined now yeah i had issues with connection so i'm sorry sir i couldn't join no problem no <laughs> i problem. miss your uh, <laughs> lecture but i hope others might have gained a lot knowing about the whole thing so yes 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 to prabhat sir so if there is no question then uh, i'll again thank props dr chikara for sparing his time from hectic schedule even uh, in office hour so thank you very much uh, dr sikara and <clears throat> i thanks to all audiences who could join this and i thank uh, professor deshmukh and professor patankar sir uh, who, who who arranged this talk uh, so and of course i cannot forget to thank and dr mosmi who could talk to you and provided opportunity to uh, us for this wonderful talk so thank you very much yeah thank you thank you so much dr mosmi and uh, dr prabhat uh, thank you so much for this uh, webinar thank you sir thank you so thank much you. thank you bye 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 prabhat sir ha ma'am i think so you did it all <laughs> thank you so much for your support hello Let's hope uh, yeah there were some issues with domain change so they had changed the domain since morning i was taking classes i did not look into it that they are going to stop it any time and once i came from my room it all was nothing i can see so <laughs> and i rushed and then i went out i saw it was raining again i came back again oh. i rushed it like hell of a thing but whatever yeah. i think so uh, last uh, meeting was much better and yes, uh, this was office hour and uh, some yes. of the students might have class have another might yeah be. yeah so i would uh, prefer that we do it only on weekends and yes. weekends is much better yes. because uh, the speaker whom we are calling they also take out their time hmm. and uh, it's a issue for a ceo to come down especially on a working day yeah so i i i know his capability he is one of the best microbiome scientist of the country so once he came because i just told him that we need to have one more session so that we can go pan india so i think so from next time we'll keep it only on saturdays and sundays that was also sunday that we arranged the other one Yes, so we'll Saturday is uh, fine, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, Saturday is. That time, Saturdays. that time was good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, welcome. Okay then, Namaskar. Bye.